Hello, this is Lady Boule, and I hope you're having a great day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, y'all, all I can say is Jonathan Majors is looking weak right about now. This is his lawyer. I think she's Indian American, and I guess he thinks by getting a woman lawyer, that's going to make him look more sympathetic to the public. But it might be time for him to switch lawyers because she's not really doing an effective job of convincing the public that all of this fell on the woman. He's not taking any responsibility for that. And that looks weak. It's just not me saying that. It looks weak. Look at this little woman. This woman probably doesn't weigh more than 100 pounds. And somehow she did all of this herself. And he called the police because she was having an emotional crisis. Well, guess what? When somebody is having an emotional crisis, you call the paramedics. You don't call the police. Something happened to that woman now. When the police is called to your house over a DV dispute, once they get there and assess the situation, whichever one shows signs of having been injured, the other person is going to jail. It doesn't matter who called them. Whoever has been hurt has been hurt. And that other person is being hauled off to jail. And I know this because years ago, one of my co-workers was on the brink of divorce. And she and her husband were going back and forth. And they were having it out. They had a real dispute. And when I say dispute, it was a real dispute. So she jumped up and called the police. But when the police got there and assessed the situation, instead of arresting her husband, they arrested her because she had thrown a ceramic bric-a-brac at him and had knocked up, her knot upside his head and it was bleeding. And the police like, you're going to jail. So she had to go to jail. So it doesn't matter who called the police first, because in this case, it could be that she was going to, she threatened to call the police. And so he jumped up and called the police first. I guess he thought the police was going to take his word for it and overlook what they were seeing on that woman. And this is to give clarity to the chorus of black men that keep saying, he called the police, he called the police, as if that exonerates him. It doesn't. The police is used to looking at people in emotional crisis as well as people who are suffering from DV. They know how to make that assessment. So you can jump up and call the police first if you want to. But once they get there, they know what to do. Believe it or not, the police knows what to do sometimes. Furthermore, this sounds like something an elementary school student would do. She hit me first. She hit me first. Even a boy who considered himself a macho type boy wouldn't go screaming to the teacher about a girl hitting him. That is very beta male-ish. So everybody's willing to throw this woman under the bus and blame this woman for something that she may or may not have done. All they have actually accused her of is having an emotional crisis. That is not illegal and it's not a crime to have an emotional crisis. Somebody even suggested that in her emotional crisis she might have strangled herself and knocked herself in the head. Then this is a black person, a black woman. So it just goes to show how desperate black people are for black men not to take responsibility for what they may have done. And they keep throwing the recanted word around. She recanted. She recanted. Well, this is what the recanting looks like. So this is what she allegedly wrote to him. Please let me know you're okay when you get this. They assured me that you won't be charged. They said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and they knew we had a fight. I'm so angry that they did, and I'm sorry you're in this position. We'll make sure nothing happens about this. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. I only just got out of the hospital. Just call me when you're out. Now, she's saying here that it was her fault for grabbing his phone. She grabbed the phone. So what? You did what you did because I grabbed the phone? Well, that's not recanting. That's, that's not saying he didn't do it. And I don't see how anybody could use this text to think that's going to exonerate him anyway. Because what she's saying is very damaging. They said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and knew we had a fight. 
when they saw the injuries on me. Injuries. That's what got him in that squad car. And this is the next text that they say shows that she recanted. It says, they just called again to check on me and I reiterated how this was not an attack and they do not have my blessing on any charges being placed. I read the paper they gave me about strangulation and I said point blank, this did not occur and should be removed immediately. The judge is definitely going to be told this. She ensured this to me. I know you have the best team and there's nothing to worry about. I just want you to know that I'm doing all I can. I guess she's saying all I can on my end. I also said to tell the judge to know that the origin of the call was to do with me collapsing and passing out and your worry as my partner due to our communication prior out of care. She promised all would be relayed. This woman was taken to the hospital because she had injuries, she had collapsed and passed out. I'll say it again. Why didn't he call the paramedics if this was an emotional crisis? Why did he call the police? All this is doing is what she said. She's doing everything she can on her end to get him out of this mess. And between these two tweets, she said, I love you. And that's the emotional crisis she was going through because she's emotionally involved with this man. And he's out there apparently doing other stuff. So she grabbed the phone to find out what he was doing. And that's what brought all of this on. Neither one of these tweets to me means that what she said originally happened didn't happen. Neither one of these tweets says that. I think at this point, Jonathan Majors probably needs a new lawyer because the lawyer that he's got is trying too hard to convince the public that this woman has recanted. It's almost like this woman is almost, she's at a position, she's been almost treated like a criminal herself. Like she really did something. It was all her fault. I saw that on one of the headlines. She admitted it was all her fault. She has admitted no such thing. What I find most interesting about this, and a little bit refreshing as well, is that for the longest, black men have tried to make black women think that they've really missed out on something when they've missed these men, these celebrity men. They have money, they have fame, and they have access to different kinds of women. And when they choose other races of women, there are black men who try to make black women think, oh, oh, something wrong with you. Look at you. You're not as beautiful. You're not as good as she is. She's more feminine. She's more submissive and all of that. Well, you end up in jail and then what? So I just think that black women ought to take a victory lap on things like this because imagine being in the, in the position of this woman that Jonathan Majors is involved with and they say she's 40 years old. She's a 40-year-old white woman who has not really broken into the entertainment field. She's not a big-time actress. So she's latched on to him. He's an up-and-coming actor with the potential of making big money. So where else is she going to go? So she's trying to hang on to what she's got with him. Because now, what about you? Does anybody think that she's going to get a white man that's 33 years old? that's on the brink of really making a big splash in Hollywood and becoming a big star, the next big thing? No, she's not going to get that. So she's trying to hold on to what she's got. Anybody who had a heart might feel some sympathy for this woman. Now this is part of a conversation that was being held on Twitter. This person said, according to reports through his lawyer, she has recanted her statement. There's not enough info out to know what really happened. If she indeed had an episode, she could have injured herself or could have tried to attack him and he defended himself again. We just don't know. We absolutely don't. And the person replied, actually, she hasn't recanted her statement. She got an order of protection and then said she would not cooperate further with the police which is very common in DV cases. The prosecutor has decided there is enough evidence in the case, even without her testimony, to bring charges. So according to this person, charges are going to be brought against him. But something happened because otherwise there wouldn't have been any reason to call the police. And even if charges are filed and he's found guilty of this, 
It's not this woman bringing him down. In America, there are laws against things like this, against these DV cases. She didn't write the law. She's British anyway. So no, she didn't write the law. And let's remember, she didn't even call the police. He called the police. Dr. Umar Johnson said he was the most masculine or something like that man in Hollywood right now. Well, first of all, black people don't need to be looking to Hollywood for role models. You don't need to be looking for a man in Hollywood to set the tone for black manhood and masculinity. The black men in the community need to be setting the tone for masculinity and manhood. And they do that by taking care of their families and taking care of the church and, and the community and going to PTA meetings and, and city council meetings and making their presence known. That's, how, that's what masculinity is. Not starring in a movie where somebody has written a role for you and made you up. And made you up to look like something that they, it, that's in somebody else's imagination. Some script somebody else wrote. And they, got you fit, you, they made you fit that script. But that's not who you really are. What you really are is a beta male running around here jumping women and causing, wreaking havoc in, in the community. And I wish these content creators, these black men on social media would stop trying to make black women feel like they missed out on something because they missed out on these black men because they might have celebrity and the appearance of having money until something happens, until they say the wrong thing or make the wrong move and then some other group of people will come and snatch the rug right from under their feet. And then they got to go back begging those people to get their job back. I wish they would stop trying to make black women feel like they missed out on something by missing out on these men. These are not good men. These are just puppets that are dangling before black American people to say, look at him, look at him, look how well he's doing. We don't even know how well these people are doing. And this brings me to my final point. Black men have made a big deal over their access to white women. They have rubbed that in black women's faces over and over and over again. So when they're with these Beckys and things are going good, oh, it's all good. That's their preference. They got a Becky. I don't date black women. I only date white girls. What white girls at? What white girls at? And so for a while, everything seems to be going fine. They are flouncing around all over the place trying to be seen. They got a Becky. So as long as things are going well, they're going well. But then if things take a turn, we got a different story. So when you're up, you're up. But when you're down, you're down. And when you're up against a Becky, you're upside down. So Jonathan Majors is upside down right about now. Something happened. Something happened to this woman. And so my question is, at what point... Does the white woman's humanity come into play? This is a human being. She is emotionally involved with this man. He overlooked four or five hundred years of history between black men and white women in this country and still got with her. And yes, she is a white woman. She doesn't know how to be anything else. She has lived on the opposite end of racism than black people. So she does not have a comprehensive knowledge of what the black experience is. But she might have some idea of what it is. She might have some idea what black men's interaction with the police is or has been. She might actually have some idea about that. And maybe that's why she didn't call the police. So at what point though does her humanity come into play? If she had an emotional crisis, that's a human being in crisis. But in crisis over what? Or if something happened to her at his hands, she's still a human being. And so if we're going to make a big deal over the white woman and the black man, oh, he got a big, he got a snow bunny, he got a real one. If it ain't snowing, I ain't going. Now that's when you are trying to convince black women that you are doing something big by getting with these white women. But then what about when something like this happens? This woman is a human being too. You have to be held accountable for what you do. If he didn't do anything, he won't be charged. He won't be charged. If he's innocent, his lawyer says he's completely innocent. 
If that's true, he won't be charged. But my question is, what if something did happen? What if he did do something? What about this woman's humanity? Now, you love the women when they're going along with you and trying to make black women look bad. But then when something like this happens to this white woman, then everybody wants to turn on her. That is not right. You pick this woman, you treat this woman like a real partner. And even if she did take your phone, so what? You don't get mad and go off the deep end. And I don't think it's right to take anybody's phone. I've never taken a man's phone. I don't even look at my husband's phone to see who he's talking to. After all these years of marriage, if somebody can beat me rocking, they can have my chair. This is your partner. This is who you chose. You treat this person with humanity because this is a human being. Okay, y'all, that's how I feel about it. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.